Thank you. So I think it's only fair to tell you at this point that the title of my presentation is uh, somewhat misleading. I was looking for something catchy and uh, it had to have the word quest in it because that tested well with student focus groups. They love the word quest. I'm actually here to talk to you today about the semicolon. I'll give you a few seconds to make your way to the exit. Um, it was probably in middle school that many of you learned to hate grammar and especially punctuation. Uh, there were some of us, whilst we were parsing sentences, one of my favorite activities, we learned to be grammar geeks and we've been flooding the internet with grammar gags ever since. Um, punctuation, especially the semicolon, is, is a controversial bit of syntax. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut once said that using a semicolon only proved that you'd been to college. He actually said something quite a bit more rude than that, but I'll let you look it up yourself. Um, in 1837, two French professors were so passionate about the point virgule, as it's known in French, everything in French sounds better, uh, that they fought a duel over it. And the defender of the semicolon, of course, was defeated. And I don't know whether it's correlation or causation, but around this time, people stopped using the semicolon. Um, by about 2008, Slate magazine actually posed the question, has modern living killed the semicolon? And I think a quick look at this uh, screenshot will tell you that it is in fact alive and well. And there'll be a special prize for anybody that can tell me how many semicolons are in this bit of code. Um, <laughs> it's CSS, it's really boring. Um, so the semicolon, as any of us who have learned to program know, is probably the most powerful symbol on earth, next to the hashtag, possibly. And with the introduction of mandatory programming classes, in many Western countries, it's not going anywhere. Um, in the UK, for example, they've just brought in, uh, in the new national curriculum, they're going to start teaching kids to code from the age of five, all the way up to 16. In fact, the, the syllabus, or the curriculum, actually states they're going to be using two programming languages, at least one of which must be code-based. And, and I think this is a reaction to politicians scrambling to make education relevant for the 21st century. And when they see figures like this, which is the average wage of a programmer in the U.S. in 2012, according to a website, I think it's money.com or some such, uh, they see a possible solution, and when big names like Bill Gates and uh, that guy from Facebook, I forget his name just now, Zuckerberg, that's the guy, uh, they tell us that we're short 1.4 million coders, they start to think they're really on to a solution. Um, but the question is, where in the curriculum, where in the school day do we start teaching all this coding? Do we go back to our computer applications classes? Do you remember teaching kids to learn spreadsheets via the lemonade stand method, I like to call it? Um, lots of people are actually suggesting we have to get rid of some stuff that's in the, in the curriculum. Uh, generally, they're proposing to get rid of the hard stuff, the stuff that's costly or expensive to run, the stuff that we can't find teachers for, um, things that are generally unpopular, so things like algebra, modern languages, music, things like that. Uh, poetry, right? But to me, teaching programming and coding in isolation is sort of like teaching grammar and, and figures of speech instead of teaching literature. Um, so a solution came up yesterday, and I think Alex and Lasugud were exactly on the mark when they suggested we needed to start teaching from a computational programming point of view. It's, the, it, it's how people solve problems. It's not you know, teaching our students to think like computers. It, it's, it's conceptual thinking that goes beyond just coding. Um, computational thinking, you use the principles of computer science and an understanding of human behavior to design systems. It, it applies everywhere. It works in all disciplines because it goes beyond programming because it's a way of solving problems. So things like Computer science, things like abstraction and decomposition, for example, are just as relevant when you're learning to read or studying environmental systems as they are when you're trying to design an enterprise computing system or a, an iPhone app. They apply everywhere. Um, so what's the point? 
The point of my talk is that what happens if these jobs don't appear? What happens if there aren't really 1.4 million uh, programming positions out there? And there are lots of studies to suggest that. And should our schools be places where we design what we teach based on the whims of political expediency or, or, or whatever's in the market that day? I'm not at all saying we shouldn't be teaching computer programming. Don't, don't think that's what I'm saying here, but I think we need to think about it. Otherwise, uh, it's just as easy to hear kids possibly saying five years from now, the way they say now, when was the last time you used algebra in real life? You know, they could just as easily be saying, when was the last time you used JavaScript in real life? Thank you.